أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلها من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى We glorify Him and we thank Him for His blessings upon us I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah he is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibadullah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran, قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful indeed is the one who purifies himself. And the one who corrupts himself will definitely be from among the unsuccessful ones. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us in the Quran about the concept of self-purification that we need to look at ourselves. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, at times we look at wanting to change the world. And then we want to change the place where we live in. We want to change our countries. And then at times we look at our communities and we want to change our communities. And we want to change our families. Everyone needs change. And sometimes we don't look at ourselves that we need to enact changes within ourselves. Of course, when we make changes within ourselves, we will make a difference in the lives of other people. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in the Qur'an, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Verily, Allah does not change the condition of someone unless he changes that which is within himself. And so it's important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that changes come within us. You look at countries today and you look at communities today and you see that people move into different positions. We have presidents changing every four years, 
In our community, sometimes we have people changing every two years or three years. But what does that change do? What is it that it really does for people? The people who have assumed the power or moved into those different uh, positions, it has really become status for them. And if there is no change within them, then it doesn't matter who moves into the position. It wouldn't make a difference. And so today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us look at ourselves. Let us look at what changes we need to make within ourselves. In Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Verily, Allah does not change the condition of a people. Allah does not change the condition of someone unless that person changes that which is within himself or herself. We need to look at what standards we set for ourselves. If we don't have set goals and standards, then we will remain where we are. And there are times when we will slip farther away from where we are in terms of deteriorating. If we look at some of the companions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had goals and objectives. They laid out standards for themselves. Some of them, they looked at, uh, how can I benefit my family, myself, and how can I benefit community? And so we had many of the companions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who departed this world and they had wealth. Because their standard was that we should accumulate that which will help to benefit others. If we look at Umar ibn al-Khattab, he, 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 he set goals. And that is why we found in his caliphate that Islam took a different turn and it went from places to places that people did not expect that there were there people who would be accepting Islam. We need to ensure that our belief is concrete, that we are committed in our belief. Allah, He says in the Quran, in الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقاموا. Those who say Allah is our Lord and they are steadfast, they, they, they have that firmness in their faith. Allah says it many times in the Quran about steadfastness, about the commitment that we should not only believe, but we, we are sincere with regards to our belief. And that is why Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Iman, laysa al-Iman bit-tamanni, وَلَكِنْ مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَهُ وَالْعَمَلِ Iman is not the mere wish or hope, but Iman is that which is registered in the heart and it is being approved by the limbs of the body. And so, when, when you say you believe, then demonstrate that belief. Th that's how we enact changes within our lives. 
that we be a sincere believer, we are formed in our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, quite often it is the other person who is wrong. It is the other person who has faults and it's never us. If you look at people, if you are negotiators or you are arbitrators, when people come to you, someone comes complaining about a wife or a husband, someone comes complaining about a son or a daughter, someone comes complaining about a mother or father, or someone comes complaining about a brother or sister, the one who comes first, that one is always right in his or her opinion. Because that's the one you listen to first. If people were very judgmental, like uh, scholars and imams and shuyukh, they were very judgmental, there would have been so many divorces and so many separations and so many uh, chaotic situations in our communities. And so, Islam teaches us that we need to listen to both sides. We, li we need to listen to the husband and to the wife we need to listen to the son, daughter. We need to listen to the mother, or father. We need to listen to the brother, or sister. We need to listen to others and not only the one who comes to complain or to say that I am the victim. Perhaps that person is not really the victim. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us very beautiful hadith Tuba liman shagalahu aibuhu an wayub nas blessed indeed is he who is preoccupied with his own faults rather than with the faults of others Quite often, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we make dua and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our dua to make things easy for us and not difficult upon us. And yes, we want ease and not difficulty. Quite often, We, we forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in knowledge, in wisdom, to grant us skills. Because there will always be challenges in our lives. To grant us the skills and the, 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 the resources, the knowledge, so as to cope with the challenges that we will face in life. Quite often, husbands look at wives, you're not spending enough time with me. Or wives, you're not spending enough time with me. Sometimes we need to make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show me the way for my husband or my wife to want to spend time with me. Quite often, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we make dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, let my children 
listen to me. Children, sometimes they go on the wrong path. But sometimes we forget to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, show me the way to speak to my children so that they will hang on to me, they will want to be with me. Sometimes the way parents speak to their children, they drive them away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in Al-Qur'an, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّعْيِ إِذَا دَعَان Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when my servant asks you concerning me, tell them that I am near. I answered the prayer of every supplicant as he calls upon me. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are being reminded in Hadith Al-Qudsi that when we take a step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will take ten steps towards us. And if we go to Him walking, He will come to us running. And so there is always a road of an opening for us. Allah is always stretching out His hands to accept us. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was sent to perfect mannerism, characteristic. He said, Innama bu'ithtu li utammima makarim al akhlaq. Verily, I have been sent to perfect behavior, to perfect mannerism. And so let us use Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as our role model. Verily, in the Messenger of Allah is a perfect example for you. Let us use him as our role model and try to perfect our own behavior, our own mannerism. Let us make sure that what we want to see in others, we see it within ourselves. We, we ask people to be kind. We ask people to be loving. We ask people to be compassionate. We ask people to be charitable. We ask people to be honest, tolerant, forgiving. Let us look deep into ourselves. Are we tolerant? Are we forgiving? Are we kind? Are we charitable? Are we compassionate? Are we loving? And it's not loving just only to our immediate or charitable to those whom we know. But when we speak about these qualities that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came to perfect how does it apply it to us in the general sense do we look out for everyone do we love for everyone that which we love for ourselves the standard that we ought to live by la yu'minu ahadukum None of you is a true believer until and unless he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself. 
My dear brothers and my dear sisters, there is an Arab proverb that says, the one who lacks something cannot give it to others. The one who lacks something cannot give it to others. Don't tell people how they should behave when we ourselves are not behaving well. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, sometimes we look at what, uh, and we ask ourselves, what is it that Allah has prepared for me? According to the Salaf, we should ask ourselves, what is it that we have prepared for Allah? We will meet with Allah. What is it that we have prepared for that meeting? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in Al-Qur'an, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah, wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad, O you who believe, fear Allah, and look to what you are preparing for the morrow. Look at what preparation you are making for when you will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not that Allah has prepared Jannah for the believers. It is not that Allah has such wonderful things for those who believe, those who fear Allah, those who are dutiful unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is it that we as individuals are preparing for when we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Remember the prayer of the great Prophet of Allah, Yusuf alayhi salam. He prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Tawafani muslima wa alhiqni bis salihin. Cause me to die submissive cause me to die obedient cause me to die as a true muslim and join me with the pious the righteous ones ibrahim alayhi salam he prayed to allah rabbi jalni muqim as salah he, he, he talked about himself. He prayed for himself. Oh, my Lord, make me from among those who will be constant in prayer. Change from within. Change your own self. And from my progeny, those who will be constant in prayer. And so... We, we saw that manifestation that Ibrahim alayhi salam, he made prayers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifested it in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We saw Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam demonstrating his compassion and his love and his kindness and his concern for people when he went to Taif. He prayed, my people do not know, leave them, perhaps out of them will come those who will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was manifested many years later that people from there took the message of Islam to other parts of the world. 
And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, always strive to enact changes within yourselves. This is what we are being taught by Allah and His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember death always. And remember the saying of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam every soul or every slave will be resurrected upon that which he died. So think about how you want to be resurrected. It's not about changing the world. It's not about changing the country. It's not about only changing the community and your family, but it's about changing our own selves. How is it that we want to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How is it that we want to be resurrected? My dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are being reminded in the Quran about struggles. And struggles to make changes within our lives. And what happens when we make those struggles? Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And those who strive in our way, those who strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, We will guide them to our path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And verily Allah is with the ones who do good. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us focus on ourselves. Let us focus on our mistakes. Let us focus on whatever we may be doing wrong. Let us focus on making changes within ourselves. And inshallah, we hope that by making changes within ourselves, that we will be able to make a difference in the lives of others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And may he save us from the torment of hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين المؤمنات من كل ذنب فاستغفرون إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ودوان الله عليه من يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters let us stop making excuses. But instead, let us learn from our mistakes. Let us always have that willpower 
to make changes. In the Let us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, set goals for ourselves, realistic goals, goals that will make us to help, help us to make a difference in our lives. I want to encourage you to look at this beautiful surah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he reminds us of about our social behavior the norms that need to be established go home and look at surah al-hujurat Allah he reminds us about being careful when people come to us and they give us news that we need to verify. Allah reminds us that we should not look at people and just defame them. Look at them and say they are no good because perhaps there are people who are better than you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that we are all one single brotherhood. Inna mu'minuna ikhwa. The believers are one single brotherhood. So don't just look at the faults of people, try to bring them together. Make peace between your two contending brothers. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, there are times in life when we look so much at others and we do not look at ourselves. We give advice to others and we do not take those, those same advices. We try to help people to make a difference in their lives and we do not make difference in our own lives. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the example of the scholar who teaches the people good things but forgets himself is that of a lantern. It gives light to the people but burns itself out. It's an example of a lantern. A lantern sheds light. It eventually will burn out. So we need to be careful. You know, there's something when you do chaplain courses, they teach you about compassion fatigue. That you try to take care of the, the world, but you do not try to take care of yourself. You burn yourself out. And at the end, you see that you haven't done, you, you haven't elevated, you haven't moved from where you were. You haven't made a difference in your own life. And so my message today, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, it's not about Muhammad, it's not about Ahmad, it's not about Abdullah, it's not about Aisha, it's not about Fatima, it's about you.